evening. Uh, we don't have too many announcements. You know, you can see Vacation Bible School was last week. Uh, we've kind of wrapped that up. We're still going to do a, uh, a uh, noisy offering this evening for the service project that was part of Vacation Bible School as well. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? This coming Sunday is the 4th of July. Uh, look forward to that weekend, you know, go out and see fireworks and all the things that go on. And so uh, I turn it over to Addie to share about the service project. We have been working on our confirmation service project during the week of VBS. We decided to raise money to help purchase wigs for children undergoing chemotherapy. We chose to donate the money raised to the Healing Haven Foundation as they help provide funding for this purpose. In addition, they provided funding for a wig for one of our Baylor's High School students currently undergoing chemotherapy. We learned that a wig can cost from $1,500 to $10,000 and a lot of insurance companies do not cover the cost. We chose this type of project because patients with cancer hold a special place in our hearts. Our family has lost two members to cancer, our Uncle Tom at the age of 40 and our Uncle Mark at the age of 60. Our mom is also an oncology nurse and she has shared many stories about patients and their families on their cancer journeys. We have been fortunate to meet some of our patients, visiting with them, and even helping one of them move into a new home. We wanted to make a positive difference and bring some joy to patients as they embark on their journey with cancer and treatment. We hope the congregation can help support this VBS service project as well. We will be doing a noisy offering today to help raise funds for the special cause. We set a goal during VBS to reach $150, in which we exceeded that goal, raising $646 so far. We have a new goal of $1,500, hoping to raise enough money to purchase a child or purchase a wig for a child with cancer patient. Please help us reach this goal. Thank you. to God. Let's stand. We begin our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> our call to worship is uh, selected verses from Psalm 33. Sing joyfully to the Lord. Make music to him. Sing to him a new song and shout for joy. The Lord foils the unrighteous plans of nations, but the plans of the Lord stand firm forever through all generations. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. One of my favorite uh, national hymns, if you will, is uh, God of Our Fathers. That is our opening hymn today. Yeah. 
in splendor through the skies. Our grateful songs before your throne arise. Your love divine has led us on the path. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. Almighty God, grant that your Holy Spirit may move every human heart so that the barriers that divide us may crumble, suspicions may disappear, and hatred cease. Heal the divisions of our country so that we may live in peace and make us to be a blessing to all. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We have the reading of the scriptures. The Old Testament reading is written in the 8th chapter of Deuteronomy. Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today, so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God walking in obedience to him and revering him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey, a land where bread will, be not, will not be scarce and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given to you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increases, and all you have is multiply, 
Then your heart will become proud, and you will forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Friends and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If you say to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens, they do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wild flowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all such things, and your Father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Well, there was a young man who got a letter from his former fiance. It went, Dearest Bobby, no words could ever express the great unhappiness I've felt since breaking our engagement. Please say you'll take me back. No one could ever take your place in my heart, so please forgive me. I do so truly love you. Yours forever, Mary. P.S. Also, congratulations on winning Megabucks Lottery. <laughs> you wonder what the, uh, the motivation is there. You know, what you treasure, that's where your heart will be also. And evidently her heart was on a certain treasure. Um, well, the reality is, is yeah, we are all, in a real sense, rich. The average annual income in the United States is $35,000. That's the average individual income. That income means that if you're making that, you make more than 96.5% of people worldwide. You are on the top. 3.5% in the world. We have Social Security, we have pensions, we have IRAs, we have things to help us in our old age that in many countries, many places around the world does not exist. Reality is in this country, no one can be denied health care. No one. It's illegal to deny people health care at a hospital and so forth. Yet in other places of the world, they are. Um, Denise and I have, have, have uh, gone on medical mission trips to Bolivia. And down there, a lot of health care, 
unless it's an absolute emergency, you don't get it. So when we go down with the surgical unit, they're doing things that we would take for granted, like taking out gallstones or something like that, where somebody just lives with all the pain and they can't do anything about it because they can't afford to. And so we provide it for them for free. Um, I remember one particular man, the reason I said gallstones is I was just absolutely amazed. Um, the doctor brought, you know, after, I was the one who was cleaning the surgical instruments after uh, surgeries, and he brought back the pan with the gallstones in it. You could have made a whole necklace. <laughs> it was a lot of gallstones and some pretty good sized ones. I can't imagine the pain he was going through. But we are blessed. We are blessed in this country with so much. Do we realize how blessed we are in America? Jesus said um, in Luke, actually chapter 20, he says, from everyone who has been given much, much will be expected. And from the one who has been entrusted with more, more will be asked. This is Jesus teaching about for us who are truly blessed. We are blessed. It means that we are responsible for what we have. If we have been blessed with talents, with wealth, with wisdom, with knowledge, time, whatever it may be, it's expected that we will be a blessing for others, that we will share from the gifts that God has given us. Jesus tells of the rich man, he tells a parable, who, you know, his, his farm was, was absolutely, you know, going great. Um, and his crops were multiplying, and he says, I don't have enough room for all the crops I have. He says, what will I do? He says, I know what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and then I can lay up enough for many years to come, and I can eat, drink, and be merry. But in the parable, God says, you fool. Who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Because your soul would be demanded of you this night. Abundance, blessings, material blessings. This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God, Jesus says. You see, that's the question. Is it, it's not just about material blessings. It's about the real blessings of life. You know, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Is your treasure, do you treasure your relationship with God, being a part of his kingdom? You know, all that God, that means that we have God in our lives. And so Jesus said, do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink, the worldly possessions, the, the, the things of this world. For the pagan world runs after all such things. And your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. You see, God provides for what we need. That's part of what, what Moses was talking about is, is the Israelites were preparing, preparing to go into the promised land. It's like, you know, every, you are gonna, this is such a great land that you are going into. You know, your gold, your silver will multiply. Your, it, it, it's, it's filled with milk and honey and olive oil and all these great things, fig trees. It's gonna be beautiful. Think about where they came from. They had spent 40 years where? In the desert, and now they're coming into a land that's going to have much. But his warning is, but don't forget God when everything increases and everything's going great. Don't forget God, because he's the one who is keeping his promise, his covenant. One of the things that Paul also wrote that um, warning us that, you know, because you can get pulled away by all the things of this world. He says, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. We brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. If we have food and clothing, we will be content. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered from the faith. Material blessings versus spiritual blessings. And so Jesus says, do not be afraid, little flock. The Father wants to give you the kingdom. He wants you to be a part of it. 
And so he says, sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will not fail. Where your treasure is, what you value, there your heart will be also. You see, we are blessed. We really are the ones who are blessed in so many ways. But we're blessed to be a blessing. That's what Jesus is talking about. God will take care of you. God will give you what you need. But turn around and see the other people that are in need. Whatever it may be. Whether it's physical needs, emotional needs, social needs, spiritual needs. God blessed the Israelites as a people. As, as a nation. And that was part of keeping his promise to Abraham. And that, that was part of, you know, taking, you know, Abraham became this great nation and they were in Egypt and now he's bringing them out and bringing them to this promised land where they will become a people, a nation. The covenant, the promise that God made to Abraham. He said, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring. I will give you and your offspring the land where you are now an alien, the land of Canaan, a perpetual holding, and I will be their God. God makes that promise to this people. But he also says, but all the world will be blessed through you. And, and through Christ, God has blessed the whole world. God continues to work through God's people. God blessed them. They multiplied. And he led them out of slavery. And so it is that Moses said, Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land that the Lord has promised on oath to your ancestor, your ancestors. What is God's command? What are they to do as a people? They are, God's command is to love, to live in a loving relationship with God, just as God has loved them and cared for them and led them all the way out of slavery into this new promised land, and to love one another, and even to love the poor, to love the foreigner among you, because you too are a foreigner. You too are a slave understand what they are going through. Care about them too. I think in a way it kind of reflects, you know, that Jesus says, do unto others what you would want done unto you. God is saying, you've been there. You've been that foreigner. You have been those poor people. You have been the slaves. Turn around and realize now is your opportunity to give back from all that I have given you. And so he says, when you have eaten and are satisfied, praise God for the good land he has given you. You know, I think as we come into the 4th of July, that's one of the things that we can do. Give God thanks for the good land that we live in, the goodness of this country. And I think it's a good warning, but be careful. Do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands that I have given you today. Because sometimes when we're, we're, we're rich in blessings, we forget God because we don't need God in the same way that we did before. Maybe when, when things weren't going so good, sometimes that's when we pray the hardest and we look out to God and we reach out to God the most. God's saying, no, walk with me through all of life. Learn to love as I have cared and loved you. You see, it's not just about membership in a particular group, but it's about discipleship. It's about how we live out the commands and the obedience that we have to God. And so it is that uh, James writes in his letter. James is, is uh, the brother of Jesus. He says, Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep themselves from being polluted by the world. Reminds me that Jesus says the pagan world runs after all these things, the riches, the things, that, the, 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 the things of this life. Don't treasure those. 
treasure relationship with God. And so he says, seek God's kingdom. All these things will be given to you as well. You see, it's about obedience, about walking with God, about discipleship. That's how we store up riches in heaven. That's how we send it on ahead, so to speak. Being rich toward God, valuing our relationship with God, loving God as God has loved us. And so count your blessings. Look around, see what you have. My blessings, I mean, my relationship with God and the difference that it has made, knowing and understanding and realizing God's love for me, but also leaning on and knowing that God is there every step of the way. I count my blessings, I, I count my parents, the way they raised me, the things that they taught me, the way they prayed for me. My wife, Denise, she's a blessing from God. My call to the ministry, a blessing from God. My children, a blessing from God. My country, the greatness of this country is a blessing from God. I think about all the possible ways my life could have gone. And I am so thankful that God made the way and called me into the life that, that I have found. But I was the one, I, I, I had to turn back to God. I mean, I've shared before, I kind of turned away from God, and I had to turn back. And that's, that's when God was really able to shape my life and begin, to, follow, or begin to, to, to help me to find the right way that God had for me. I'm thankful that God has guided me. But reality is, I've also made mistakes. You know what? I've been disobedient. We're simul justus et peccator. We're simultaneously saint and sinner. We're still in the flesh. The reality is, is we struggle, still struggle with that. We're not perfect, but we are forgiven. And that's the greatest blessing, I think, of all. God's gift of forgiveness through Christ. Blessed to be a blessing. And that's what we celebrate, the forgiveness that we have in Christ, the promise of heaven, the joy of being, a bless, being blessed is being a blessing. It's the joy of giving, not just financially, but serving, touching others' lives. How are you giving back to all that God has provided for you? The many ways that we can love and reach out and care for others to, so to speak, pay it forward. Is actually, in a way, God, Christ, has paid it forward to us, all that we have received. Pay it forward. Be a blessing. Love as God, as God has loved us in Christ. Be a light for the world, the world around you. Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. I love reading Mother Teresa. Um, she was such a person of prayer, Obviously, such a person of love, caring for the poorest of the poor. But she had a lot of wisdom, a lot of wisdom. And she said, you know, to do all the things that we did, we needed to have that time away, that time in prayer, that time of reconnecting. That, you know, one of the things that was important to her was the Eucharist, the Holy Communion, to, re to remember how we have received and then be able to go and give it and care for the least of these. Mother Teresa said, God created us to do small things with great love. I believe in that great love that comes from the heart should start at home with my family, my neighbors across the street next door. And this love should then reach to everyone. There's a saying, you know, let there be peace on earth but let it begin with me. You see, that's part of the key, is realizing I am blessed. How do I share from the blessings that I have? One of the great quotes I like from Luther also speaks of the fact that our faith propels us to act in love. It's faith active in love. Luther said, Behold, from faith thus flows forth love and joy in the Lord. And from love and a joyful, willing, and free mind that serves one's neighbor willingly and takes no account of gratitude or ingratitude, of praise or blame, of gain or loss. 
For we do not serve in order that we might put others under an obligation. We do not distinguish between friends and enemies or anticipate their thankfulness or unthankfulness, but we most freely and willingly spend ourselves and all we have. Hence, as our Heavenly Father has in Christ freely come to our aid, we also ought freely to help our neighbor through our body and its works. And each one should become, as it were, a Christ to the other, so that we may be Christ's to one another, and Christ may be the same in all. That is, that we may be truly Christians. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you came and you showed us the way, the way to love. Lord, help us to realize how blessed we are. Uh, the very gift of life, family, the gift that this country is, um, the gift of our relationship with you. Lord, help us to realize our blessings and be a blessing for the sake of others. We just lift this up to you. And all God's children say, Amen. Let's stand as we sing our hymn of response. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was received by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us lift up our prayers in the Spirit of Christ. Let us pray. Gracious Creator, you give us each new day. Keep us steadfast in your ways of love and turn us from selfish thoughts and actions. Give us strength of faith during times of trial. And in all we do, guide us by your Spirit in fulfilling your purposes for our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lift up those celebrating a birthday this coming week. Nancy Soresic, Tiffany um, Jandry, Connie Schiesel, Gloria Smith, Ruth Torreson, Ethan Bremer, Mary Thompson, Emily Schwer, Rand Harris, Gloria Scherenbrock, Riley Indries, Barb Griffin, Anders Sorensen, Michelle Williams, Jeff Ahrens, Lauren Halverson, Mark McCulley, and Mackenzie Simon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God of all, with wonderful diversity of languages and cultures, you created all people in your image. Guide all of humanity to be true caretakers of this beautiful world that you have given us. Give us compassion for the less fortunate, that we would care as you have cared for the world in Christ Jesus, your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for peace among nations, for governments, and for all in authority at any level, that they would govern with justice and mercy. We lift up our own country, those that are elected to lead us, and government workers at every level. Give us and them your wisdom and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord God, we also lift up those that we know that are in need of your healing and comforting touch. We lift up Gorman Lex, Lorraine Reinville, Dolores Johnson, Kathy Luco, Ginger Linsmeyer, Bob Klesick, Ellen Jones, Merle Graff, Wayne Allen Husky, and Grace and Bryce, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up those also serving in the military, especially at this time of year. Thank you for their willingness to serve and keep them safe. We lift up to you Daniel Brandle, Matthew Brill, Kyle and Dylan Conrad, Corey Evenson, Mitchell Hazelwood, Carter Hildebrand, Jeff Kahns, Justin Mertzik, and Andy Schnell. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now let us pray together the prayer by which our Lord taught us to pray, our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we celebrate together as God's people, Holy Communion, Jesus laying down his life for our life. Let us prepare our hearts for Holy Communion by confessing our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, 
by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not always loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and renew us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God truly forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the, ch of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, you so loved the world that you gave your one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have everlasting life. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. We look with hope to his coming again to take us home to be with him forever. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. We participate in the body of Christ. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks to God, he gave it to his disciples to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this the remembrance of me. We participate in the blood of Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Please come, for all are welcome, guests and everyone. All that's required is that we simply and truly believe that Christ is our Savior and Lord. Amen. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, pour out upon us your spirit of love and wisdom. Unite us with Christ and all of his people. And through your word and this sacrament, by the power of the Holy Spirit, may Christ dwell in our hearts through faith. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with his favor. He will give you his joy, his peace, and his love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is, O Beautiful for Spacious Skies.
Go in the spirit of Christ to love and serve the Lord, sharing God's word, showing God's love, and serving God's world. Thank you for being with us today.